Hi wonderful people, hope you're all doing well. So today we are going to take a look at Mother Tyson's new book. Last Tuesday, January the 26th was the publication of Just As I Am, which is the title of her new book. And on that day, Miss Tyson or Mother Tyson, I feel I feel like I can't even call her Miss Tyson because, you know, she is so magnificent. So so on that day mother tyson sat down with her beloved friend tyler perry to discuss her new book no one could have foreseen the passing of mother tyson on thursday which happened on thursday the 28th of january everybody was in shock we are still in shock um it's it's just really hard to take in it's just really so hard to take in i'm sure you can all agree so anyway so today starts with us having broken hearts and broken spirits but i want to say to you guys that let us be positive in the knowledge that miss tyson lived every moment of her life to the fullest and she lives behind or left us behind the gift of her work and her accomplishments so in this video we're going to see how she talks about her book and so please do enjoy the interview as well just go out there and buy this book i'm definitely getting this book i need to have a piece of mother tyson with me so guys enjoy the video and i'm going to do a second part so this is the first part of it and enjoy the video and just let's hear what she has to say about her book mr tyler perry yes that's right oh <laughs> I, I thought that you as my mother would say had thrown me real quorum through his horse i haven't heard from you oh stop that. <laughs> stop that stop that i see i see you wearing that brooch well i always wear it yeah for you yeah that's right man. thank you so much absolutely the gift that uh Tyler Perry overheard that I wanted to buy and then I changed my mind because I had uh two nieces and a nephew that were graduating from various uh schools college and designer school and dancing school he overheard me say I went to buy it and then i thought i can't spend this money on that for myself i have these three uh young people graduating i wanted to give them a party and i did and the next thing i knew i was ordered to go to uh tiffany and uh ask for a certain person yep. and i wondered how he knew that i wanted it and uh i did just that she took me into a, a private room and she presented me with this brooch and every time i see it i'm happy i'm excited i'm i love that you love it so much it looks beautiful on you so let's let's go ahead and get into this this thing right i want to talk to you about just as i am i want everybody listen to me I want everybody to go out and get this book because you have an Oscar, you have uh uh Emmy, you have a Tony. I want you to be a New York Times best-selling author at 96 years old. That's what I want for you because this book is incredible just as I am. I want to read this. I want to read this. It says this is these are your words. Just as I am is my truth. It is me, plain and unvarnished with the glitter and the garland set aside. In these pages I am indeed Cecily, the actress who has been blessed to grace the stage and screen for 6 decades. Yet I am also the church girl who once rarely spoke a word. I am the teenager who sought solace in the verses of that old hymn for which this book is named. I am a daughter and a mother, a sister and a friend. I am an observer of human nature and the dreamer of audacious dreams. I am a woman who has hurt as who was hurt as immeasurably as I have loved that is so powerful. I am a child of God, divinely guided by his hand. And here in my ninth decade, I am a woman who has long last at long last has something meaningful to say. 
Now, for years, I asked you, when are you writing a book? When are you writing a book? And you would always say the same thing. What, what did you say? When I have something to say. That's right. That's right. And as I was reading the book, I was surprised to, to learn that you actually, Barbara Jordan would actually say that, right? She said that to me when I asked her. I was asked to give her, to present her with an award. Oh. And when I finished I turned to her and I asked, when are you going to write your book? And she looked at me and smiled and said, when I have something to say. Yeah. yeah. And I said to myself, if a woman as accomplished as Barbara Jordan can say that, I can say that too. So I stole it from her <laughs> and that was my answer every time someone asked me, what are you going to do, you book, Cicely? Will I have something to say? Yeah. Well, listen, I know for a fact in reading this, in every page, in all 400-something pages, you had a lot to say that had been held held up there for years. But I, I want to start with the cover. Tell us about this photo. It is so striking. It is so powerful. There you are, shaved head and all, beautiful, stunning. Tell us about this. Tell us about this photo. I had gone to uh, London to promote the role of Rebecca in Sounder. And Lord Snowden was the photographer. After he finished doing the work for 20 years, he turned to me and he said, Miss Tyson, I find you so striking. Mm -hmm. Would you mind if I did some photos for my collection? And I said, no, of course not. <laughs> uh, that uh, that photograph, believe it or not, I had never seen. It was sent to Arthur Mitchell, my dear friend, uh, as a gift for his birthday. Uh, when he realized that he was passing, he said to Gail, Wiggins, his PA, uh, please take that photograph down. He had placed it above his headboard, uh, and I never saw it. He asked her to take it down and give it to him. She did, and when he received it, he said to her, give this to Sicily. So she came to me one day and she said, I have something for you. And she presented it to me and I was stunned beyond belief. I said, where did you get that from? And she told me the story. And then she said, he had it hanging over his headboard. And he so was huge to have it. I said, that will be the cover mm. of my book. Wow. Wow. You, so he had this privately hanging over his headboard. You watched over him for all these years, and now we get to have you watching over us. I love it. I love it. I love it. The, 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 there's so much to cover in this book. I don't even know how we're going to get to all of it. But just as a, on a personal note, just as a friend and someone who loves you, who you, you call me son, I call you mom. It, it's the amount of love that I have for you and the opportunity to see you put all of these this history in these pages is just uh, so profound. And there's so many young actors and actresses who are coming up who who think that they have a uh, a story or they have it hard and they're 25 years old. I'm like, listen, let me just give you a book to read so that you can understand what it's like to really move through a life and hold on to a legacy. How did you hold on to yourself? And I know you talk about this in the book. How did you hold on to yourself through all of these trials and tribulations that you talk about in the book? I just kept moving forward. Hmm. I trust God. Yeah. I know he cares for me. And so I knew the power and the strength 
that I would get when moments uh, attacked me that were not acceptable to me. Mm. And I just kept moving through them. Moving. Never yeah. alone. He said, no, never alone. I will never leave you alone. Yeah. I promise never to leave you, never to leave you alone. And when you talk about, speaking of one of those moments, and, and you know, this is very, very hard for me to read, especially loving you the way that I do. Uh, talk about this moment being 31 years old in, in an uh, acting class and having mm -hmm. something horrible happen to you. How much of that would you like to talk about? I want people to read it to know, but long before, um, yeah, go on. How much of that would you like to talk about? Well, the first movie uh, that I did uh, was called Carib Gold. Mm. And I didn't like, well, I didn't know what I was doing. Yeah. And a, uh, an actor by the name of Diane Sands, um, when I told her that I wasn't going to do another one that was offered to me, um, she said, oh, don't do that, don't do it. There is a marvel marvelous uh, acting teacher uh, teaching at the Paul Mann School. Sydney went there. Harry went there, she went there, Renette Carroll, all the black, big black actors that I respected went there. Because Lloyd Richard was one of the teachers. And she said, I think you ought to go and see him and uh, talk to him and perhaps you will change your mind, will change. So I did, I made an appointment. I went to a session, which I ordered it. And uh, uh, Lloyd was not there that day, but Paul Mann was there. And so I, he interviewed me. And as I was about to leave, he said, would you wait? I would like to discuss a matter further with you. And so I did. And everybody else, uh, but a few handful of people were still in the acting class. And suddenly uh, I started to turn and he grabbed me and he pulled me to him in a manner that seemed disrespectful and I was trying to pull away from him and then he grabbed me by my hair and pulled me down and we fought like cats and dogs and uh, I was finally able to free myself from him and he was left with a handful of my hair in his hand. I was, I was so shocked that I, I backed away from him and I backed myself out of the room. And then I turned around and I ran. And I heard him say, uh, class will start. And he gave me the date. And if you feel like coming back, he said. You are welcome to come. Well, I went home and, and tried to digest what had happened and the effect it would have on me. Um, one of the things that I've learned about myself in the course of this journey is that uh, I'm a person who uh, is very determined. Uh, and that if I set my mind to something, uh, it's me against you, and you are not going to stop me to get what I went there for, which was to talk to Lloyd uh, Richards and find out 
whether he thought I was talented enough to be an actress and how I could go about doing that. And so uh, when the date came, I walked into the room of the class that Paul Mann was heading. And he looked, he stopped talking and he said, I thought I'd never ever see you again. And I just sat down. And I did not go back as long as he was teaching the class. I took all my classes with Lloyd Richards. In, in, in a moment like that, you talk about moving forward, but here you are, a uh, black woman in and and if you if you if you think about black women in the time, they were considered a, a lot less than a lot of other people, and having the strength to do that, you equate a lot of that to your faith and church and what your mother taught Absolutely. you to move through that. Yeah, Very yeah, strong. yeah. Very I don't, yeah, I don't know how. Like when I, even when I'm talking to you about some of these things, I don't know how you would move through, or I would move through a lot of things that we've been through without without our faith. And looking at you now, I see it all over you, even still in this moment. And growing growing up, and I, I want to move past that because it's very, very painful for you as well as painful for me. And I'm sure that there are others out there who are hearing it. Um, and you go into great detail about it here. So I'm sure as people are reading it, they, they can get a better picture of it. But what I love about it is your determination to not let anybody stop you. Because no matter how dark that was, here you are at 96 and you have given us all of these decades of your work, your art, and we get to adore and love and adorn Cecily Tyson. So I thank you for making it through that with the grace and the class that you did. Thank you. 